What is going on guys? Welcome back to the REI Marketing Weekly Newsletter and thank you again for being a subscriber to the newsletter. I uh, appreciate it. There's a lot of incredible content that goes down in the newsletter from, uh, th this is normally my favorite segment which is the Who's Crushing It segment. I get actual practitioners of real estate investing on this show to talk about things that they're doing in marketing that they're crushing and dominating it. And even if it's like the smallest things, I mean, I know, I remember the first show that we had was with Jimmy Ogle and he was talking about how he changed up his postcard just to add a family photo. And he got um, a lot more results from just doing that. And so just small things like this. Um, and then there's other big things that we could talk about as well. I mean, so that that's why I got the man of the hour on the show right now, which is Mike Hambright himself. Guys, if you, okay, so listen, if you're a real estate investor, obviously you're like watching this, this uh, segment right now because you subscribe to the newsletter, but if you don't know who Mike Hambright is, you are living under a rock. So <laughs> just, let's just bypass all the like fluff and just say that. So Mike, man, I appreciate you being on the show for like the 1% of people that don't know who you are. Do me a favor, introduce yourself real quick, who you are, what you do. And then we got like a new thing that you're bringing up that we'll be talking about on the show here. But um, just for the people that don't know who you are, do me sure, a favor, introduce yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my, th thanks, Josh. Awesome to be here with you, my friend. So uh, I'm Mike Hambright. I'm a real estate investor in the Dallas Fort Worth market. I've been an investor for uh, about 12 years or so, a little over 12 years. And um, I've flipped hundreds of houses down here and it's evolved. Like a lot of people's business that are around for a while, you start to bolt on all kinds of stuff and layer in other things from, uh, pro uh, we don't do property management ourselves, but we have a rental portfolio um, got into coaching about 10 or 11 years ago. So I've coached literally thousands of people at this point, started flipnerd.com about six years ago. And uh, we've done over 1500 video podcasts, uh, in the past six years, have a few different flavors of podcasts now mm -hmm. and try, you know, over six years, you try lots of different things, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, run a mastermind for real estate investors called investor fuel experience, real estate investors, which Josh is a part of that as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got all kinds of, you know, stuff going on. So when, when you're kind of get, when, if you have shiny object syndrome like me, you're constantly like testing stuff or trying new things and pivoting until yeah. you find stuff that works and got a few things that are working really well. So, yeah. Before we jumped on the show, Mike's like, how do you do it, Josh? You're a clone. I'm like, dude, you're like a clone army. I mean, like, <laughs> it's, it's, holy crap. You're asking me if I'm a clone. I mean, this guy does an insane amount of things in the real estate investing industry and he has definitely impacted the industry. Um, just beyond, I mean, what most people can even like fathom doing. And so uh, if you guys aren't listening to the flip nerd shows or the investor fuel shows, I mean, you absolutely got to go listen to them. Um, obviously everything we talk about the, the shows, any resources we talk about are going to be linked in the description below. So make sure you go check those out. Um, and then also I'll give uh, Mike the opportunity to tell you guys how to connect with him. If you would like to sure. learn more about the investor fuel mastermind, which I'll talk about that too, a little bit later on, but um, everything's been linked below. So make sure you check that out. So, um, Mike, we're going to be talking about lead generation. Uh, mm. this is a huge topic. Obviously there's yep. like, if you don't have leads, you can't close deals period. That's right. Um, That's right. and, and, and I know that we've had con micro conversations with other guests on the show specifically about how they generate leads, but we're going to be talking about it in a little bit of a different perspective. Um, when it comes down to it. So the first thing I want to, I want to like kind of pick your brain about, and we didn't even like, and, and this is how I run the shows is we don't prepare for this stuff. I want to like, just kind of like have a conversation with you as the guest. Yeah, so yeah. let's talk about the, um, the kind of like what lead generation actually is, because a lot of people think that it's, it's marketing and it's only marketing, but marketing covers like this massive, it, it's this, it's this massive umbrella over, a bunch of different silos and lead generation is inside of marketing, but it's not just sure, yeah. marketing. Right, um, right. So let's talk about how, like how, how you have, um, you know, brought your lead generation and amped it up for your business and, and made things happen in order to be able to, you know, yeah. get proper leads coming in the door. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if your audience is, is kind of unfamiliar with the importance of lead generation really for any business, right? I mean, if you don't have leads, so a lead is a perspective. I kind of give this analogy of like a retail store. Right. And for a retail store that is customers coming in the door and looking around like they may or may not buy, but if they don't come into the store, they're never going to buy. Right. right. So um, 
you know, it's really the same thing. We need customers coming in our door all the time as real estate investors. And for most real estate investors, that means a phone call there. Somebody's calling in uh, from direct mail or something else, or it could be text message marketing leads, which has obviously gotten popular now, mm -hmm. or it could be internet based leads. So you have to constantly be uh, finding ways to get people, you know, to, convince them to come into your store, which is to pick up the phone or fill out a form or something. Right. So right. a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, well, I built a website. And the truth is, is like, you know, there's, I don't even know billions of websites, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, like a, a website means nothing. The fact that you have a phone means nothing if nobody knows how to open the door and, and mm. come in. Right. So that's, that's what marketing is, or that's, you know, one of the flavors of marketing right. is, is kind of the direct response part or somebody that was going to get people to come to you. So the truth is, is uh, for real estate investors, you know, there's, there's kind of two things I'll say is a lot of people get started and, and I'm not, you know, there's nothing wrong with not having a lot of money when you get started. You just have to hustle more. Right. But right. Um, at the end of the day, your, all your hustle should be towards getting customers to contact you or you contacting customers yeah. because the prettiest postcard in the world doesn't mean anything. If, if nobody sees it, like if nobody sees your marketing or knows you exist, you don't exist. Right. right. And so, so let's, let, let's, let's like park on this for a second, because I know yep. you're really big about this whole hustle thing. And I am too. Um, you know, both of us, we are very hard workers. We hustle when we need to. Right. I always like to tell people I hustle like 24 seven, whether that's hustling while I'm sleeping and sleeping the hardest that I can. I'm on a date with my wife. I'm hustling during that time, you know, that kind of thing. But um, when it comes to like work, I mean, you could really, really spin your wheels in the mud and throw marketing dollars directly down the trash if you're not building it out correctly. Oh, no. um, and, and, and applying that to like leads, like you said, that would be interested in even coming to the store and purchasing anything in your store. Right. So right. talk about that. Like, like how do you determine what kind of marketing you're going to put forth in order to bring leads into your store, you know, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, a couple, so a couple things are, uh, how much of that, if you kind of have this money and hustle balance, like it's got to come from somewhere, either you're hustling it up or you're spending money to, yeah kind of hustle for you. Right. Sure. And so if you're, if you're, if you don't have a lot of money, like, you know, some common things are putting out bandit signs. I'm not a big fan of bandit signs. I kind of feel like anything that you have to do in the dark at night and has the word bandit in it is probably not a sustainable <laughs> marketing strategy, yeah, but yeah. you know, not if you got to do that to get started or whatever, that that's, that's fine. That's your mm -hmm. prerogative, but it's just, it's not sustainable, right? It's, you can't, you can't scale that in most cases um, or text message marketing, which is pretty cost effective sure. now, but, the way that this has evolved over the, over the last, you know, five plus years, uh, marketing for real for seller leads, right. Is that, uh, who you market to is it's, just, it's, you can't you used to be able to like be a shotgun approach and just kind of hit everybody, but it's too competitive for that today. So yeah. you've got to become a sniper, you know, more so of a sniper than, than a shotgun approach. Mm -hmm. And so it turns out that everything comes down to data you know, or a big part of it comes down to data. Like who, who are you marketing to? Cause you can't afford to just market to everybody. Right. And so, um, at the end of the day, the, one of the problems that a lot of real estate investors have is they have some money for marketing and because we're, you know, real estate investors are notoriously like cheap asses, right? We just like <laughs> every, never pay retail for anything right. we're frugal. I'm just going to do it myself, whatever, all those things that that's going to kill you in marketing because yeah. the problem is, is people will take their limited resources and spend money on marketing and more often than not say, well, I'm going to go after the super cheap list and I'm going to use the cheapest like things. And it's like, well, it seems cheap, like per, per like postcard or whatever. Yeah. That's cheap yeah. to send it, but you're, it's a total waste if you're sending it to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's where uh, really kind of technology and data is coming to play. So, I don't so what are you? So what are some things that you do to to like figure out who that person is that you need to send that postcard to, or yeah. you need to send that ad? You know, put that ad in front of the, yeah, that yeah. So, the, so what's common now is, you know, in the past people would say what we'll mail to if they it could be age based and equity based. Are they an absentee owner? So they don't live at the house. And, uh, which means it's probably a rental, which they probably hate being a landlord you kind of make some assumptions, right? right? Or they have enough equity to be able to sell if they were motivated. So I'll mail it to them just in case they're motivated. Like that's so wasteful these days. Yeah. So all you can really do, unless you're like an ambulance chaser or something like that. And you know, like, Hey, somebody just died. Like I'm going to go 
buy this house is uh, look for indicators, right? That's all you can really do is stuff like, you know, probate, back taxes, different kinds of liens, water shut off, like lots of things that might indicate that that person has distress in their life and is more likely to sell their house than, you know, the average person with none of those things. Yeah. And so like in my instance, you know, my house, my house is paid off. Um, that doesn't mean I'm motivated to sell just because I have equity. Right. Right. And I don't have any, any sort of liens against, I don't have any, you know, my wife and I didn't recently get divorced, no debts, nothing like that. So there's no indicators, but a typical real estate investor might be pounding my house with mail because that they have equity and it's in a desirable area or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, that's totally wasteful. Yeah. And so, um, so you have to look for those indicators to say, uh, is there potentially, it's like if you go to the doctor, right? You get, you get a physical, they're checking your blood pressure. They might check your blood. They're, they're just doing tests to see, are there any flags that pop up that we might need to drill deeper, right? That's sure. what you're looking for. Gotcha. So obviously the source for that is going to be lists, right? Yeah. And that's the problem is, uh, you know, there are lists, there's listability, list source, uh, a bunch of different sources out there, uh, but none of them are all inclusive. Like they're all there's like the big national guys that know like size of the house, how long the sellers owned it for, how much equity they might have. Yeah. Um, but they don't have local data, which is through the counties and cities that would know, are there mowing liens? Are they, are they, do they have back taxes? Like all these things. And then even in the counties, you know, uh, you have to overlay probates and other things that usually, you know, are not necessarily tied to the real estate specifically, but it's tied more to the seller. So you have to kind of layer in, seller information on top of that. So the data is kind of out there, yeah. but the truth is, is it's a huge pain to, to do this. This is why it is. a lot of people don't do it. Yeah. Right? I, I know for myself, like I'm not a data person. I hate data. The only reason why I ever study data is because, you know, for instance, with the clients that I have, I, I send them analytics back for like their, when the engagement and all that stuff, the vanity metrics, that I like to call them, but they still right. want to see those numbers, but I, I hate doing it. So I delegated that to somebody yeah. else. And then their, their job is to actually curate the content specifically um, for the engagement that, that it's getting. But you know, for somebody that's out there that maybe, you know, they don't like data. They don't, they don't like to look at it. Maybe they don't even know what it is. They're so naive about yeah. it, which isn't a terrible thing. I mean, um, you know, you got strengths and weaknesses, but there's people out there that have no clue what to even look for. Like, what would you tell those people? What is important to look for? What is important? I mean, you've talked about it a little bit here, Yeah. but what's the best use of data in order to get in front of those right people so that they can get the good leads? Yeah. So one of the things there's, it's interesting when you look at kind of real estate, what we do as real estate investors is there's typically not a whole lot of innovation. Like there's a few marketing things like SMS marketing is pretty yeah. popular right now. It didn't really, you know, nobody talked about it two years ago. Mm -hmm. RVMs have come and are largely gone now because there's some legal issues with uh, yeah. ringless voicemails. Um, you know, people are cold calling. They're still doing that, but you can even feel that's winding down. There's probably be some, law in, in some states it's already illegal. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's laws against these things. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's a, things that kind of come and go, right? So one of the probably bigger innovations, which it's, it's really intuitive has been finding data and then, um, what we kind of refer to as list stacking. So it's like this, if you go to the doctor and you had a physical and you're like, you have high blood pressure, you got like something going on with your skin. Like there's all these different things. They're like, you're, you know, if you just had high blood pressure, that's one thing. It's like, yeah. well, if you got this and this and this and this, it's like, you got bigger issues than, than we thought, you know, because you, you like, they all stack on top of each other. You're like combining these issues. Right. So, so that is really where, um, where things are taking a turn now for sure. people that are willing to do this now. So there's some great tools out there like batch lead stacker for stacking up data. Um, and there's great tools out there, but the hardest part is still getting the data because yeah. it's a lot of work. And the truth is, is, you know, and I talk to people about this all the time. They're like, well, I got the list. I'm like, you got a snapshot of the list at the time you grabbed it, but the next day it was outdated. And then there's also stuff that needs to kind of fall off the list. Like sure. some eventually people pay their taxes and, yeah. When you get divorced, you're not distressed for the rest of your life. Like at some point, you know, things move on. Right. And so the, all these lists have a shelf life, if you will. Right. They're like, they're not, they're not good forever. Like things change. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that's the hard part is not only finding out how to get the data, it's refreshing it on a weekly or certainly monthly basis to say what's changed because, 
if you're in a major market, if you're in any market, I mean, it doesn't matter how small a market you're in, every day there's people dying, there's people getting divorced, there's people that are evicting crappy tenants, like all these things that create opportunities for us as real estate investors are happening all day long, every day, mm -hmm. everywhere across the country. Yeah, I, I think this is why it's extremely important for you guys to keep a pulse on the, you know, the marketing side of your business is because of this, like exactly what he just ended this with is you got to make sure that you're studying the data and then uh, putting it in the right places. Because like we mentioned, I mean, uh, you may have been doing RVMs, you know, six months ago, and now it's kind of winding down a little bit. You probably weren't doing text messaging, you know, four years ago, you weren't doing yeah. Facebook 12 years ago. So, I mean, things, and, and a lot of times, Mike, it's, it's the marketing really that is the most most innovation, the most innovation that goes on in a business is the marketing because, yep. you know, you know what they say is marketers ruin everything. Right. So, true. <laughs> you know, when yeah, it comes we're to constantly, it. whatever works today, like it's just a matter of time before that's, that's how, you know, uh, even text messaging is that way today. Like yeah. it was like this, like oasis in the desert for a little while. Yep. And now a lot more people are doing it and you know, the next thing will pop up. Like we don't know what that is yet, but, um, you know, just things continue to evolve. Things that Absolutely. things that used to work don't work as well. And then things come back around. Like cold calling has been around forever, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it really wasn't being used for real estate investors for a long time. It kind of came into play and it'll go away and it'll it'll come back. And mm -hmm. you know, the interesting thing about mail, because a lot of people will be like, oh, mail's mail's dead. Well, I can tell you that our business is uh, like mail is uh, definitely the foundation of everything we do. And yeah. a lot of successful real estate investors will tell you that the biggest difference is the data they're using to mail to instead of just throwing it out there to everybody. And the, the interesting thing about mail is since the government is, you know, since the, I don't, since the government, since the post office is effectively a quasi government agency, they're never going to outlaw junk mail because no. the post office is already having a profitability issue. Right. So the more yep. junk mail, the merrier. That's right. Exactly. And, and that's something, that's something very interesting that I've come across in the, the uh, real estate investors that I've worked with. I mean, I, I worked with uh, close to 50 investors last year doing their content marketing awesome. and I, like almost, I could tell you probably every single one of them are still doing, still doing direct mail and getting good results from it. And most of them, it's their best lead source, which is yeah. like extremely interesting. But yeah. I, I guess, Mike, like uh, kind of the thing that I want to lead into as well, and I want to pick your brain on a couple more things, but there's like, sure. I mean, we could do like a two hour show just on data, the importance of it, finding the right data, how to use it properly and, you know, uh, build it out correctly with your, with your marketing. But um, we're going to save that for another time because I wanted to hit on like kind of the importance of data and then, um, why people may not be getting results that they're looking for from the data. So sure. if somebody is like, you know, my, I agree with everything that you're saying, but I am not good with data. I don't really want to do much with it, which is causing me to still put out those bandit signs and send postcards to every single person that is on this list. Like yeah. what, I mean, there's plenty of obviously education out there to learn this kind of stuff, sure, but sure. would you tell them to outsource that stuff? Would you tell them to hire somebody in house or continue to do it themselves? I mean, how does somebody like go about doing yeah, this depends. the right way? It's like anything, like if you're good at it, you could do it yourself or you could teach somebody how to you can outsource it to somebody on your team or a VA or somebody. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you screw up your mail, let's say, or even if your text message marketing, the data, you still need that data. You still want to use it for text message marketing, cold calling, any of those things. Yeah. You just obviously skip trace and find the phone numbers associated with that, with, with the list that the data is telling you is people that are, believe to be the most distressed, have the most distressed kind of flags going on. So if you want to do it yourself, that's fine. Uh, if you want to outsource it, you know, and have somebody manage your data and your mail and all that, um, people can totally do that. Right. So it's just a matter of, you know, you have to stay like, are you comfortable outsourcing your data to a VA, let's say, cause they're cheap and they'll get it done. And if somebody copies and pastes like a column wrong somewhere and you mail that out, like you just wasted all that money. Right. And yeah. we, I know people that's happened to you easily. You know, you probably, you probably might even know some yourself that, send something out with the wrong phone number or they fat fingered it and typed the wrong number. And yeah. I didn't get any calls from my mail. Oh, that's not even my number. Like <laughs> I'll tell you when that happens, like you just want to cry. Right. So, um, yeah. And so, you know, we, we realized this is a big enough issue to where we actually created a solution for this. Uh, kind yeah. of recently. we've just, just been rolling it out here nationally after beta testing it for a while in VFW. So let's talk about it. A, let's yeah, talk about it. Done, 
Okay. Well, we have a kind of a done for you, done with you service because we know that consistent high quality lead generation is, is a problem for the typical real estate investor. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, the, the stuff that we're doing, the stuff I kind of talked about here is uh, stacking up data, managing mail for people, like all those things. It's like, we're not doing anything that anybody can't do themselves. It's just a matter of, are you doing it consistently? And do you even want to be doing it or, you know, you know how to do it right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think the average real estate investor, you know, we just, we just take on too much stuff. We're doing like acquisitions, we're doing marketing, we're like checking on rehabs, we're trying to raise money, we're trying to do all these things. And, yeah. you know, that's why a lot of real estate investors businesses don't grow because they don't find ways to kind of outsource some of that stuff. And then right. honestly, one of the things that takes, that goes by the wayside most often is consistent lead generation. Like I know I need to order my mail, but I need to scrub off my, the people that said, take me off your list. I haven't done that yet. And so I'll get to it as soon as I can. And what does that cost you to not yeah. have the phone consistently ringing, have your mail drop like clockwork every single week on Tuesday? You know, what does that cost you to not have that? And very few people have that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so tell us about Investor Machine. So brand yeah. new platform. I'm excited about this. I mean, the website's yeah. already up and running. I'm on it right now. So what can people expect with this? It's a, it's a done for you lead generation tool yeah. that investors can take advantage of. Tell us about That's it. That's right. So yeah, we go into, we go, when, when a member joins, we're effectively part agency, you know, part community, a little bit of, uh, of folks that uh, can learn from each other and really kind of outsourced marketing manager. So when somebody joins the program, we go through an interview process because we want to, we really want experienced investors. I mean, if you're not used to buying directly from a seller and knowing that you consistently have to spend money on advertising, then you're probably not the right fit for us. But yeah. for experienced investors, we basically tap into their market. So we pull, you know, a lot of real estate investors pull age and equity or absentee owners and they kind of stop there. They have equity as absentee owner and they stop. And a lot of gurus teach that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy. It's really a disservice to new real estate investors because they're just going to waste a bunch of money and be out of the game, you know? But uh, so then we layer in all, so we go into that person's market, which is a county for us. And then we tap into as much local market, local data as we can. Things we talked about, probate, tax delinquent, uh, recent mowing liens, water shutoffs, anything we could possibly get that are all kind of red flags. Like, does somebody have three of these things? Do they have four of these things? Do they have one of these things? And we effectively stack up the data and let the data tell us where the best place to start with marketing dollars are. So we actually take it to another level and uh, a third level of data, which is personal preferences. So our members uh, fill out kind of a, a lengthy survey and they rank the zip codes that they're marketing in, size of properties, price points of properties, size of lots, Do they want land, like a lot of other criteria because you know somebody that just wants to buy rentals might target very different houses than somebody that just wants to be kind of a mid-level property rehabber or higher level, right? So they would target very different properties. And so um, we factor all that in and say, based off of this and based off of your budget, this is who you should mail to. And then we manage the mail and uh, we order it like clockwork. We scrub it and try to make sure their mail is, is uh, as efficient as possible. And then if they want all that skip trace, then they can get all the associated phone numbers and market to those folks too. So yeah, man, yeah. that is absolutely incredible. So yeah. um, if you guys want to learn more about it, I will have the, uh, the website linked below. So make sure you check that out. It's called the investor machine.com is where you can go to sign yep. up or learn more As about the, it. T H E the investor machine. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> I'll, I'll have a direct link below guys. So just click on that and head over there. And I'll just tell you one thing, guys, the, every single client that I work with, with content marketing, the reason, the reason why there's three reasons why they work with me. Number one is because they don't have time to do it. Number two is they don't know how to do it. And number three is they don't want to do it. And <laughs> most of you probably fall into the silo when it comes to managing your direct mail, managing your text message, mark, text message, text message marketing, your RVMs, all that stuff. Um, and this platform will do that for you. So I think it's, a, I mean, if you're an active investor and you're having trouble bringing leads in the door, I mean, this is a no brainer. You absolutely got to take advantage yep. of this, at least yep. learn about it. So um, make sure you do that. So I'm going to link that below. Mike, I told you I was going to keep this short. I appreciate everything that you shared so far. Yeah, man. yeah Incredible absolutely. nuggets. Um, to wrap this up, is there anything that we have not talked about in marketing that maybe you're seeing um, today that is working for active investors in their marketing? 
maybe it's directly related to lead generation or maybe it's directly related to the actual conversion side of it. Any other secrets that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, we're not going to be able to keep this as short as you want to, Josh, if you keep asking me questions <laughs> like that. You know, I just, uh, you know, you're, you're obviously friends with John Martinez. and I just recorded a podcast, a new podcast episode with John uh, a couple hours ago. And we talk, yeah. you talk a lot about content and marketing and really um, starting the marketing earlier because a, a lot of real estate investors for a long, long time, and I'm guilty of this too, we're sending direct response marketing. I pay cash. Want to sell now? I pay cash. Want to sell now? Mm -hmm. And then we follow up. Did you sell it yet? Did you sell it yet? Did you sell it yet? Instead of kind of branding, building trust, here's how we help people, just kind of getting out further ahead of somebody's decision to kind of build your brand and talk about things. And, and you know, I'd say, and I've kind of struggled with this over the last six years with FlipNerd about branding. It's at the end of the day, uh, you know, people like our logo, right? But at the end of the day, people that work with me want to work with me, like right or wrong, they want to work with me, right? And yeah. so I think a lot of us as real estate investors, we try to hide behind a PO box and a logo or a fancy name or a name that sounds cool or whatever, at the end of the day, people want to work with people and especially the types of people that we deal with, they want to work with people that they feel confident can help them solve their problems. So I yeah. think, you know, content marketing and just being yourself and, you know, saying you're a part of the community, saying you're, you, you know, you're trying to help your community and you have a family. And so I think the gone are the days where we're hiding behind logos and mm -hmm. some broad kind of brush statements or, uh, taglines that pretty much everybody else uses too. Right. And that's why I pushed content marketing so hard guys. And M Mike is like a massive believer. I mean, when he sent me over, so we actually produce a good chunk of content for, for Mike's personal brand, uh, the color media team does. And so he's a very big believer in content marketing. I mean, I've never seen such an intense content marketing plan when he sent that over. I was like, man, this <laughs> well, is hey, awesome. It was aspira <laughs> aspirational. Aspirational. <laughs> yeah. 10, pieces of, 10 or 12 pieces of content a day. Is that too much to ask for? No, no. I mean, you got, you got guys like Gary Vee that's telling people put out 80 or 90. So yeah, I can't, I can't match that yet. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but I mean, this guy is just absolutely um, on board with content marketing. But another thing that you, you said that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and actually John um, brought this up to me as well, is that like, you know, real estate is more than ever a local market, local market business, right? So, I mean, it's very, it's very localized. It's not a national industry anymore. It's very localized to your specific market. And so more than ever, people are wanting humanized companies to work with because yeah. now we're, you know, chat bots are huge. AI is huge. Um, you know, the, these automated text messaging, automation and marketing, all this stuff is really big, but I feel like it's kind of contracting back down to people wanting. Yeah. Humans, people want to deal you know? with people, yeah. You know, you when call I call the mortgage company, like, yeah. Get in this auto dialer, press one for uh, this, three for that, four for that. And I'm like, I'm over here at zero 20 times. Like, <laughs> exactly. And they've gotten smart and that doesn't even work anymore now. Like, yeah, now, exactly. That, so, zero was not an option. It's yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's so funny. Like, I mean, you got somebody like me that when I go to Target, which is the only store I ever walk into, I go directly to the self checkout lane. But then when I get on the phone with my mortgage company, I want to talk to somebody like right now. Like, right. I don't want to go through an automation and sit on hold for 30 minutes. I want to go yeah. directly to somebody. But I think it's becoming that way with, you know, real estate and especially with motivated sellers is they want to deal with human, human beings not yeah. automation. And so I think that's important. And the to people, the people that do want to deal with like automation, I don't want to, I don't want to have to talk to anybody. Those people exist, but those people are more, more you, you, now you're competing against the I buyers. I buyers. And, yep. and if, if you think you can compete, then that's fine. You got to have some deep pockets probably. Yeah. If you want to compete on the people that want to deal with somebody personally, that's where you, that's where you have to compete. You have to build 100%. trust. You have to build your brand loyalty, all those things. So yeah. it's harder to compete against uh, the Goliaths out there, you know? But. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that's another conversation. I'll have you back so we can talk about that. That'd be awesome. All right. All right. Cool, man. Hey, Mike, thank you for being on the Absolutely. show, man. I appreciate you sharing everything you have. Last thing here is if somebody wanted to get in contact with you and wanted to connect, maybe learn more about Investor Fuel. Again, guys, I'm going to have everything linked below, but uh, Mike, let people know how they can get in contact with you or um, yeah. your team. Yeah. The best place is uh, I'm a bit of a Facebook addict to Facebook and Instagram. So Facebook, uh, you can find me at Mike Cambright, Instagram. I think I am at the Mike Cambright. The Mike should, Cambright. You probably know better than me. The Mike Cambright. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we're putting a lot of uh, focus on, on putting content out there. And uh, you know, the brands are uh, flipner.com, which is kind of general real estate information, education and stuff like that. If you're new or newer, 
even if you're not newer, we have a ton of content that probably, you know, over 1500 videos. So a lot yeah. of content, of course, uh, our mastermind is investor fuel. So that's investorfuel.com. And then the investor machine is our kind of agency model that we talked about here just a little bit. So yeah. any of those places connect with me on social media is probably the best. Absolutely. And real quick guys, for 20 seconds, I want to talk about investor fuel. So I, I've only been to the investor fuel mastermind once, but I have had about 15 clients or so come my way from investor fuel, even before I stepped in front of the room. And when I stepped in front of the room, I realized like, holy crap, like this is the most abundant mindset and investor mastermind I've ever been a part of. I mean, every single person in that room is willing to share. I mean, it's a, it's a brotherhood in there is what it really is. Even the new members. Yeah, I we have some sisters too. In. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a brother <laughs> and sisterhood. Exactly, man. There's some, uh, some incredible people in there, but every, everybody that comes, you know, that's an active investor and you walk in that room, you're going to feel that same way. I mean, just like open arms, very welcoming. People are going to share with you no matter who you are. So I, I think it's an incredible group. If you guys want to learn more about it, I am pushing people to investor fuel. So again, investorfuel.com, it'll be linked below. Make sure Thanks, you check Josh. it out. If you're an active investor um, and you're going to, you're, you're taking your business very seriously and you want to grow, head over there and check it out. It's going to be totally worth it. So um, that, that's, a, there's a testimonial for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of plugs. We'll I, I think I didn't realize it was going to be, hopefully people don't feel like it's too much of an infomercial, but you know, we've got some good things going on at the end of the day. I mean, I've been a real estate investor for a long time. What I love more than anything is helping entrepreneurs achieve financial freedom and, yep. and all that that entails. It's not, it's not about, you get to a point where it's not about the money. It's about how do people use that as a tool to impact their lives and their communities and stuff like that. And so I get far more joy out of helping other people than, you know, transactional type deals at this point in my career. And uh, so we put a lot of effort on trying to help people and connect people and all those things. Absolutely. And you guys can just tell by the amount of content, the free, the amount of free content that Mike puts out. So um, huge testament to that. So Mike, again, man, I appreciate you jumping on. Thank you for your time. Thank you Absolutely. for spending time with my audience and being here. And I look forward to having you back soon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Awesome. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the Who's Crushing It segment of the REI Marketing Weekly. Make sure you're checking out the rest of the content that's going down in the newsletter. Share this around with your friends. Contact me if you have any questions, josh at colormedia.com. And again, make sure to check out all the links in the description below. Check you guys out later. See ya. There we go. Oh.